Hi everyone, and welcome to a Gem of a Secret podcast. My name is Donatella, my secrets. And my name is Coco Gem Holiday. How you doing tonight, Coco? Um, really festive, because like, it's Christmas Eve! It's Christmas Eve! <laughs> Coco is now currently, while well, this episode is airing, in Colorado. Yes. And I am here in Oregon, um, spending a Christmas in Oregon, which is nice. You know, I, it's funny though. I, I th- this is gonna sound morbid. I'm just gonna throw mm-hmm. it out there. But I always like wondered like if like I died or something before mm-hmm. the episode released. So it'd be like really sad or something. Like, like, <laughs> like I just like you're like oh my god, our last episode. It's <laughs> because I'm that girl apparently. Apparently, <laughs> that's who I am now. Don't judge me for my choices, Donna. This is your legacy. This is my. This, if you die, oh god, this now, podcast. Now I have to like make this episode better just in case. <laughs> Um, oh, actually, you, oh, and that, I, I remembered something because uh-huh. I always do this every time when we're doing this about something I just remembered. Mm-hmm. So I have, I've become more anxious about positive things. Why? Um, about losing positive things. Oh. Like that conversation of I shouldn't care. I'm sorry. Don't live your life like you're about to lose everything because obviously yeah. you could like trip down the stairs and break your neck or, yeah. you know, you could get electrocuted or you know, just something, you know, just Anything. a freak accident. Yeah. So don't live in fear of it. Mm -hmm. But I've been so happy recently. Like this last year, even though all this BS was happening in the entire world. Yeah. Like, I'm going to say it, listeners, like Trump being out of office or like, you know, him losing the election made my mood improve like three ticks. Yeah. Like. And I got married this year. And like, just there's so many good things. There was a lot of, I, I would say 2020... Was sort of sort of like a like a shit sandwich of like good and bad things. Like <laughs> yeah. you know, like there was the loaves of bread which were nice, but then in between it was some real like shit. Yeah, it's and seriously. So yeah, and it was like maybe like a triple decker. Like there were <laughs> good and bad things, but mostly bad. There was <laughs> most, most, there was a lot of bad. <laughs> yeah, but I I actually really appreciate like it on my shit Sunday. Yeah, because um, <laughs> I have to do it that way. Um, the cherry on top for me was Trump not getting realized. Yes, yeah, definitely. And so, like, I'm definitely. eating that piece, but as I go through, like, the murder hornets and corona yeah. and the toxic gases we had for a mini, mini Oh, weeks. and let's not, let's not forget, okay, before the pandemic even happened, we, our house was flooding this time of year last I year. I know, seriously. So, like... <laughs> Let's not forget that, like, yeah, after Christmas this time of year, we were having, we were getting kicked out of our place. Yeah. That's how we started the year. And I was starting with a breakup. Oh, yeah. You were starting with a breakup. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know where we were going to live. So January 1st, we didn't know where we were going to live. No. Um, We knew we had to be out of our house. We were trying so hard to stay in the house that we were currently in. And um, we didn't have any... I just was only on my job for three months. Yeah. And I was buried in debt from the three months before that. Yeah. Um, So I had October, November, December in my job. And it wasn't enough to get me out of debt yet. So Mm -hmm. when we had to... When we finally found a place, there were no moving trucks involved. No. It was multiple trips Trailers and vehicles. vehicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was um, not easy. And yeah. it was, it was how it did. It started off really aggressively. And that whole me and Adam had already decided that we were going to get married on Valentine's Day because mm-hmm. it's my favorite holiday. But then that happened and <laughs> we were like, well, this seems funky. Yeah. Now. We're having to, to get married while we're in the middle of moving. Uh, yeah. And it was awful. Like we weren't even into our house, but um, of course our, our lease date says February 1st. So like mm-hmm. 14 days in. When, like, I'm getting married. Like, it, yeah. oh, it did. It started off so rough. Yeah. Actually, the whole year was pretty rough. It started off, it started off very rough. Yeah. And that wasn't, that was not an easy time to get through. And then all of a sudden, you know, the pandemic. So we didn't even really, like, I mean, we had a lot of plans to, like, really enjoy, like, our space here. Because I tell you what, I think after this last experience, nothing sucks worse than living in a place for less than a year and having to completely relocate yes i i actually said so me and donna are going to be uh actually all of our roommates decided that we're gonna renew our lease for at least one more year yeah because i i even told this to my mom i was like i i can't do that again that was very hard and yes i'd been living in the house for six months at that point yeah donna for eight months at that point but it's still to move that quickly without even living in a place for a full year was really hard oh my gosh so rough Oh, it was awful. 
Yeah. But for our Christmas Eve episode, we are actually continuing on our journey of talking about relationships. Yeah. And so Donna's picked the um, the last one. So for this one, I picked cheating. Cheating. <laughs> cheating. Yes. Oh my goodness. I infidelities. Infidelities. So here's the thing. Like, I don't think I know a person who mm-hmm. hasn't been cheated on. Like, yeah. Everyone I know has been cheated on and everyone that I know and most people are in a gray area of having cheated on someone like, you know, when a relationship's getting towards the end, it's pretty done anyway. Yeah. But um, like, so you start dating somebody else or whatever before it's done. That's technically yeah. cheating. Yeah. But actually, let me ask, what do you think your definition of cheating is? Um, I think by my definition of cheating, I have never cheated. But I would say, <laughs> I would say that I, it takes uh, two parties being in an understanding and being mm-hmm. in a committed uh, relationship, um, and that they are to be exclusive, and breaking that understanding by seeking out comforts, um, sexual pleasures elsewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, e- even, I mean, even like other like small comforts like kissing and you know that kind ki- that type of stuff too um i think there's also such thing as like emotional um, yeah emotional cheating which cheating. is always so yeah. much worse yeah mine um my definition of cheating is a uh uh, it's a betrayal of trust. Yeah. And so that can be emotional, it can be physical, and it applies to people who are poly or non-monogamous. Because a lot of listeners out there, a lot of people are like, how can you cheat in a poly relationship that doesn't even make sense? The thing is, every relationship, every relationship has rules. Every some relationship rules. should have boundaries in the set of understanding, you know? Yes. like some There should always be some sort of communication about what... The, re- the understanding of the current relationship is. You right. know, that needs to be communicated. Yeah, exactly. Because um, when cheating in a poly relationship is saying your rule is um, you can't sleep with um, anybody that we're friends with mm-hmm. or something like that. They always have to be anonymous hookups. And then you and your partner meet a guy and you guys are all friends and whatever. Um, and then you sleep with that person. That's breaking the rule of the, it's breaking the trust. Yeah. Like, so I always considered cheating just to be breaking the trust and the rules of the relationship yeah. as they're set forth. Um, and the thing is, I, that's why people always try to get away with like, well, I didn't think you'd be mad about it. And mm-hmm. I did it anyway. We all know in the back of our minds, listeners, that what would hurt our partner's feelings and what wouldn't oh, hurt our partner's for sure. feelings. For sure. And to try to pretend that we don't is a thing. And then also, uh, let's get into the drinking conversation about the cheating debacles. I mean, I think drinking definitely leads to that. Like, I, I think f- it it lowers uh, inhibitions and boundaries end up kind of getting crossed because of that. And it makes it easier for it to happen. Yeah. Well, I... What's weird to me is like, now I've only been blackout drunk like a few times. Uh-huh. Well, probably more than a few, obviously. But um, there's very few times that I did not know some capacity of how I was functioning. Like, because mm-hmm. I remember when I'm in the moment of being blackout, like you're you're moving, you're still doing, you're still you. Mm-hmm. It's just more wild Mm -hmm. and um so when people are like well i was drunk and then it just things happened it just there's so many steps to something happening yeah you know that's just it makes it to where it's such a weak argument for me when people are like oh i was drinking i just you know just like one thing led to another i was like but you had to like get the uber to the place you checked into the hotel i was like you had to like (laughs) well i mean i think that's a different thing i think i think that there's uh, there are situations where you i mean uh, let's let's face it um queer people tend to be a little bit more open especially when we're around each other and we have you know like certain boundaries that we don't mind getting crossed or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think that even in those situations where it can be harmless, maybe at first before you've gotten enough to drink, it can turn into a situation where those boundaries can get crossed and it leads to infidelities or a a breach of that understanding. I actually, I think I agree. I'm going to retract what I said a little bit because so I have a moment, um, so me and Adam don't ever do, uh, let's just edibles to, yeah. unless we're doing them together. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
we actually had large arguments about this because what would happen is we were like drag queens and like somebody's like um they're like oh let's go to the bathroom real quick or whatever and it just doesn't it never clicks in my mind why drag queens want to go to the bathroom and it's always to do drugs i'm not Mm -hmm. like that's the reason and so i'm just like walking to the bathroom i was like oh maybe she needs help on talking or something like that and she's like oh like you know i have an edible or whatever Mm -hmm. let's do it and then i just take it just because and like that is definitely the definition of one thing led to another and it just happened. Yeah. Because one, in the moment, you don't like hurting people's feelings. Yeah. You don't want to be that awkward person who's like, oh, well, like, I can't do this because my... And like, mm-hmm. and like, so you just get caught up in human nature. Yeah. And because your inhibitions are lowered, so is your, um, so is your fight. It's, yeah. It's a little lowered. You're just like... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think those types of situations open it up, open it up to happen, um, more. I guess yeah. I, I, I think that there's obviously like ways that you can communicate with your partner in which like you both have an understanding that even like regardless of being in those situations, you kind of monitor how much you drink or how much you're how many edibles you take. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I think that 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 also takes having an understanding of like your own limits, though, too. Yeah. Well, and even on the last episode, I had mentioned that I actually think I'm a non-monogamous sort mm-hmm. of person. Yeah. It's actually why I don't have dating apps on my phone, because I think I'd be more prone to cheating. Yeah. If I had the access. It's like, yeah, having the access. Yeah. Yeah. And like, so removing that access. And that's actually why I actually made a rule for several months mm-hmm. that we're just not going to do edibles ever. Because yeah. I like when I'm drunk and it's offered, then I was going to take it. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't say no in that right way. And I remember sometimes I did, but I wasn't drunk enough yet. But if I was drunk, it mm-hmm. was like it was it, the issue just was like completely in front of me. Yeah. So I was just like, you know what? Let's just not do it because you're putting yourself in a circumstance. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that I'm well, at least I don't think I'm a shitty person, you know, because I know how I can say no. I think about it like somebody who has difficulty losing weight. Yeah. Like, yeah. They're like, okay, if I have no snack foods in the house, then I, you know, then I won't eat the snack foods. You know what I just realized? Hmm. We forgot to talk about what we're wearing tonight. Oh my gosh, Donna, <laughs> what are you wearing tonight? <laughs> um, well, since we're entering the age of Aquarius, I uh, decided to just dress up as like a total like hippie flower child. Um, I have a oh, wig on that's it. actually covering both my um, hairy, hairy mammoth boobies right yeah. now. Yeah, it's alarming. And uh, <laughs> I also have a flower crown on. Ooh, I just hit the mic. <laughs> It was one of the flower petals. It was, yeah, yeah. My flower petal just, like, (laughs) jutted out. It's actually, yeah, I have, like, powers, like, poison ivy, and she's wrapping around the mic stand right now. Yeah, and it's a little awkward because um, Donna picked these flowers from our garden, and so they're just full of and infested with spiders. So I'm just, like, watching it crawl on her is a little bit upsetting, but I still, I get it. (laughs) Yeah. I I also got a pet possum out of the backyard, too. (laughs) I'm just like Mother Nature. She's just, it's great. We'll, we'll post pictures on our website. Um, <laughs> How about you? So oh, I am wearing this um, because I'm like in the mood for like, you know, being festive right now. Like mm-hmm. I'm wearing paper streamers. You know, those ones that you buy from the dollar store because you're too cheap to buy the good ones that don't rip as easy. Yeah. And like, so I'm just like wrapped in it, like just, just everywhere. It's just flying up. It's kind of like Evie Oddly's like, you know, under the sea jellyfish thing, but mm-hmm. not as couture because I was only able to buy black because we're out of the other colors. Oh, so, I love it. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm like an octopus. That's... Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that was I dig it. Very, yeah, very festive. I know we're both very dressed for the Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness i absolutely love it so um after the break listeners uh we're actually going to as we've been doing because this has just become like a therapy session for donna yeah. we're going to be going into um specific relationships that involved that kind of like infidelity and you know having conversations about that so as always donna how are you doing this evening oh coco i will let you know after this brief commercial break Do you wear t-shirts? Do you wear a face mask? I sure as hell hope so. Do you put on your silly little t-shirt and your silly little face mask and wish you had something a little more out there? Yes. Even something, dare I say, 
matching? Girl, yes, duh. Then it looks like HunterDrips.com is exactly what you need. At HunterDrips.com, socially relevant merch and apparel is up for sale. That's never for profit. 50 to 100% of every purchase is donated. I hear they carry matching shirts and masks with designs that say cute little slogans like defund the police, Black Lives Matter, and it goes over your nose and even shirts and hats with your own pronouns on them. You know, things that are important. Oh, so you mean important. And almost all of it is donated? Yes, donated. And guess what? What? It's size inclusive too? Yes, up to 5XL. Why just make clothes for skinny people? It's all made by Queer Artist Girl. The creator of HunterDrips.com is trans, fat, lesbian, and the site also includes merch from other queer artists, including gay Portland rapper Tono. Listeners, head on over to HunterDrips.com and use the code SECRET for 15% off your purchase today. That's SECRET for 15% off your purchase at HunterDrips.com. It's a podcast with Coco and Donatella podcast. Tune into what they tell you podcast with Coco and Donatella podcast. Well, Coco, I am just uh, very excited to revisit this chapter of my life. Um, (laughs) So, you know, 19-year-old me had the most impeccable taste in uh, men that would damage me further into my 20s, uh, more -hmm. than I ever knew. So I know. And actually, the funny thing is, uh, well, it's not really funny, but it's interesting because I never actually had... I didn't have my first boyfriend Mm -hmm. until I was in my 20s, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, by the way, I always say the dating, I hate, I hated dating 19 year olds. They were horrible monsters of people. I don't, like, that is a really weird age for queer, queer men. I'm not going to lie. So we're going to go back to when Donna was 19 years old. Um, She's dating a person that we're going to call Billy for this episode. (laughs) Um, This is actually just just in case we do have any followers that have been listening for a long time, this is actually the person that Donna mentioned in her coming out story. She didn't name Oh, them yeah, then. I didn't. Yeah. Um, the person who, you know, went to her dad's job. Um, that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also wanted to talk about kind of like older relationships and, well, like age in relationships. And I think that the important thing is like recognizing, I think, certain relationships when it's a like someone who's a lot older mm-hmm. um dating someone who's like newly out of the closet and very young like it it's kind of like the older person is in a position of authority and in a position of like molding and developing that person right yeah because actually, like at yeah. 19 your prefrontal cortex isn't even developed uh, your prefrontal cortex isn't even developed until you're 23 so right. it, it I don't know. I feel like in those types of situations, it's very easy to take advantage, especially of the younger party. You know, what's interesting, though. I actually found myself to be jealous of like, so when I was, you know, mm-hmm. in my hoe days, 20, 24, 25, 26, and I would mess around with 19 year olds, mm-hmm. I was always so jealous of the fact of how sexually open they were. Mm. But hearing you say that, it's kind of like a different spectrum. Like, yeah. As much as it might have been that sexual openness, as much as sexual naivete mm-hmm. and excitement for this thing that's new to them. I mean, I was excited. I think I slept with a lot of people my first year being out. Um, I wanted a boyfriend with almost all of them that I slept with, but. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, but uh, that obviously isn't the case because, you know. Right. Well, you... And how much older was Billy than you? 10 years. 10 years. So yeah. 29? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize they were that much older than mm-hmm. I am. Huh. Yeah. Crazy. Um, <laughs> so, um, so let's talk about, let's get into it. Let's, so what was, so dating Billy, what was mm-hmm. it like the very first time you found out that they were cheating on you? And how did you find out that they were? Well, okay. So here's the thing. Mr. Billy had always kind of had a reputation in the city of, of being, um, getting around right basically you know i mean they did and it was it was always they would always date the younger guys that were newly out Mm -hmm. um it would go sour and then on to the next one right and um i just so happened to meet this person on a 
um, on some dating app. I had seen them working at the mall before, which is kind of like weird. Is like I I had known people knew him before because he worked at the mall, and like in where we were from, that was all you did was go to the mall. Right. <laughs> you know, right. it's true. Well, and especially at that age. Yeah. So, um, he had, yeah, always kind of had a reputation of that, but when you're 19, you don't, you try to like not listen and block it out. And I was approached by this person and I was, you know, glad that they found me attractive. I had also previously heard about their little stint on the real world Denver. Oh, yeah. Cause they were on the real world Denver. As a house guest. A house guest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got had sex on camera on there. I mean, claim to fame. And that was that was his claim to fame, was being the house guest that got fucked on the real world Denver. So, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I he, he had always kind of had that reputation. But um, it was, I, I think finding out was hard because I, at that age, was like so... I was, I, that was the first time that I, I think that I was really like in a position where I was being taken advan- advantage of in a lot of ways, but I was like so head over heels, like in love with this person because I was at that time not really speaking with my parents. Right. But you could never, but you, especially at the time you don't realize it's manipulation mm-hmm. per se, because one, you're a little bit too young to see it. You mm-hmm. haven't had enough Two would be, you haven't had enough relationships to recognize or acknowledge. Yeah. And three, because of the broken relationship between your parents at the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah, that, I mean, my sophomore year of college too, I, I, I was hardly really at the place that I was renting and I was, I had a key to that apartment and was like staying there. So I, key to Billy's apartment. Yeah, I did. Oh wow. And the, the way I found out that I was being cheated on is because I was reading through messages that were on his computer. How did we get to the reading messages on the computer? Well, I was using it. I would use his computer for school and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And his Facebook would stay logged in and there would just straight up be messages that he was getting. Oh, shit. Um, And I I would look into that. (laughs) So so you didn't actually seek it out. It was more that it was was more so it was just kind of available. It was just kind of available and he didn't really, he didn't really hide it. And so like that was the first, and I don't know if he ever, I'm sure he did. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he did act on some of those messages. And I'm sure that while he was able to be out at the bars, he was making out with other guys and I wasn't, you know, like, I, I'm sure that I I wasn't you know oh, right because it's because we keep forgetting that before you're 21 you can't go to bars and yeah so, yeah Billy was one of those people who I was, was his out DD often. because I was I was too young to be out the out at the bars and he was out at the bars constantly he like he missed my birthday um, while we were together to go hang out at the bars he had dinner with me and then and then left me on my birthday at his Ugh, apartment to sucks. go hang out at the bars yeah that sucks yeah. Gosh, so Billy's a treat. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, and then let's go back into the age thing a little bit that Don yeah. was talking about. So the thing is, and I've met Billy, and I don't want to say super negative things in this capacity, but I do, I sense like them being emotionally stunted a little bit yeah. in the sense of how they operated and how they acted. It was yeah. always like, it was... To be honest, it was LA mentality. It was LA mm-hmm. model mentality. Like, hey, you know, like I can make you famous, or you know, like, hey, and just like make you feel like you're the mm-hmm. greatest thing on the planet and whatever. And didn't want to be perceived as a whore, and didn't like to be yeah. perceived as an alcoholic. Yeah, like you know, and those those kind of weird things. And yeah, and what I recognize from them is, I don't know if they could have had a healthy relationship even with somebody their own age at the time. Yeah. Because they drank way too much. Um, they just did. Yeah. And made a lot of poor They had choices. a blow and go in their car. Oh, I didn't know that. At the time. There yeah. were times that I had to take him to work because he was still too drunk the next day to drive. Gosh. Well, that's just... I love how, like, poor little 19-year-old Donatella My Secrets <laughs> has been kicked out of her home, essentially, and then is living with a person who has a blow and go. Yeah. <laughs> you- you had a couple of rough years, Sarker. I did. I, I really did. And keep in mind, this is probably the longest, like, and that's the sad thing about all this, too, is, like, this um, situation was on and off for a matter of months, and we were both kind of, we would both see each other and, like, go on break, see other people and go on breaks and stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I first, like, found out that 
he was cheating on me and then there would be times when we were on breaks and I would hook up with someone and he would go online and accuse me of cheating and right. to all of his friends and it was it was a lot of projection it was a lot of like immaturity and I honestly like even though a lot of the times when he was drunk and abusive like flat out abusive um I uh like that was difficult to deal with I also was not a saint in the sure, relationship sure. like I, I think that I can recognize too that I was also very toxic and I would I would instead of de-escalating situations I would escalate them by arguing back and calling him more names after I would get called ugly and you know gross and all, all the all the things that he knew that I was insecure about that he would Interesting. pick at I think well and the thing is, I so I didn't meet you until you were 21, because I remember the first time we really hung out was at a bar. Yeah. So, and the thing is, I don't, I never really saw you in relationships during that year, per se, but, like, I, I, I think, well, actually, the one thing that I can say about your personality, especially back then, is that mm-hmm. you didn't, like to be abused. That's the thing. Like, if someone pushed you, you pushed back. Yeah. You didn't like being told actually anything you just (laughs) no and there were times there were times when i yeah i would retaliate back when i was yeah yeah and and so that makes a little bit more sense because i don't think i ever do ever admit that you were toxic in the relationship too until this podcast yeah no i i think i was i think i was immature and i didn't know how to deal with what i was being dealt with (laughs) you know what i was being dealt it was um it was a lot and and your support system is kind of wrecked because sure you have friends or whatever that mm-hmm. know you're out but you're out oh of the and they wanted and... me the, all my friends i did not listen to any of them all of my friends were like this is a bad situation he's not a good guy like get out of this situation i was but i had a key to the apartment and i was i felt like i was special and i did not listen to any of them and i lost like some friendships i there were people that would not talk to me because i stayed with in an abusive situation well, and they tried to get me out of it. Well, and I mean, that's, I mean, that's true for abusers just in general, mm-hmm. um, trigger warning, obviously listeners, but that the thing is, I don't take umbrage with anybody who stays in a situation because they don't realize necessarily how bad it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously. So my long story short is the first time that I was ever real cheated on, I guess, per se. Um, uh, actually, I've never admitted this before um, on this podcast. I actually cheated on my very first boyfriend because I didn't like them so much. And and I, um, I'm i still a virgin at the time, actually. And what I do mean by cheating is was kissing. So I there was this boy I was really attracted to um, who asked me to hang out. Like, do you want to come over and like watch anime or something like that? Mm-hmm. And um, so... I left because I remember we all went to like a thing at the at the theater on campus at yeah. Performing Arts Center. And then my boyfriend at the time was like going and this was already when it was just on the decline of the relationship. And so I was like, yeah, I'll just catch up with you guys later. And I went to go hang out with my friend who I just always had a crush on. And we were hanging out and actually um, we kissed or whatever. And that's all that happened. Um, and I actually don't remember feeling bad about it yeah and actually i remember why so i had found out a couple of days previous because i didn't party when my first couple years of college just wasn't that girl yet Mm -hmm. and my boyfriend at the time went to a party and got drunk and made out with some dude yeah and i was like so you cheated on me and he's like well i was drunk and i didn't at the time because especially when you've never drank before, really, yeah. or never been drunk, you you hear in movies, oh, I got drunk and it happened. Yeah. And so I had to just believe that that's what happened. And he was apologetic and he apologized to me. Now that I'm a little older, I realize that he probably told me that because I don't think he liked being with me. Yeah. And he was hoping I'd break up with him now that I knew that he cheated on me. Like, yeah. and I didn't do that because I'm a trusting person. Yeah. And, and so I did. I kissed that boy and I never felt guilty about it. And that really shows you how toxic a relationship can be that when you step out and you just don't give any flack for the other person. I th- I mean, when we would be on breaks and I would do that, yeah, I did not care. Because, like, <laughs> I, I knew that he was doing the same thing and that's why he wanted to, like, create distance from me. It was because he wanted to be able to do that and not feel bad about it, which I don't think he really ever did, though, to begin with. Um, I don't know if he could. And I, don't I don't know if he could. Seeing, his, uh, seeing Billy's problems, like... 
him not being able to like really recognize that certain behaviors were problematic. Yeah. And as he grew older, um, he kind of is like, cause I've, I've, I ran into him a couple of years ago. He's a lot better now. Doesn't drink yeah. as much. Seems really stable. I don't know. I've, I've cut him out of my life for good now. Um, do you want to hear about the time though, when I actually did find about him cheating? On yeah. Me? Yeah. Please. Okay. So I, um, I, went to visit him at work one day and he's like, Hey, could I have the key to the apartment? My cousin's going to be staying with me. Like I immediately uh-huh. should have known something was up because that was a weird, a weird thing. It's like, yeah, because he had been talking to his mom more at uh-huh. that point, And I was oh, like, okay. Oh, maybe it is someone in the family oh, is yeah, coming. Maybe. So I was like, I, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I was like, sure, here's this, whatever, you know? And he had the audacity to tag himself in a location with, the boy that he was out at the movies with. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yikes. And like, not like just post it. Like it like, I wasn't going to see, or like, or like he <laughs> wanted me to see it, you know? And so I like confront him about it all afterwards. And he's like, we didn't even have sex. It wasn't even, you know, it, Ugh. the other kid ended up realizing he was a complete mess and like never ended up coming back to the situation. But well, how did you, um, how did you um, confront him? Like, were you, like, waiting at the house, or did you just, like, bring it up? Or, like, tell me the deets. Um, I I brought it up. I brought up his name and everything. And there was, mm. some, there was someone who, um, a, a friend of mine or something that had introduced them mm. and didn't know that I was dating him at the time. And so the friend, the friend confirmed for me that... Oh. Yeah, that they were, like, out on a date. I think that's probably why you've always found a lot more comfort in women, because they don't lie to you as aggressively. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sometimes they tell me too much truth, though. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like... It's true. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Well, and... Because but... even... So, my other story is, like, mm-hmm. so the first time I was treated on... The first time that I know I was treated on by my ex-husband, um, I did the whole... Cr- did you... Actually, no, I want to ask you. Did you... I cried. Did you cry? I cried. And I, I mean, it, I think we broke up shortly after. And that was like one of the big, like for good breakups. And we didn't really see much of each other after that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, <laughs> I cried. I dramatically like packed up all my shit in the, in, in the apartment. And okay. um, yeah, we tried to like make it work for like a weekend after that and hang out with friends. And then we just got into a fight and I was done with the situation. As you should be. So I, uh, I listened to uh, uh, Goodbye to You by Vanessa Carlton. God, you just started <laughs> off young being that girl. And I, I had it blaring <laughs> on the radio and I was like calling one of my best girlfriends as I was crying and, and leaving with my things and uh, left the key on the on the counter oh my yeah you were done yeah you were very done i was so for me um and actually i don't think i've really ever shared this story publicly because it puts me in a negative light but as as my list because we me and donna promised ourselves to get a little bit more real on this podcast yeah so long story short like me and my ex has been like we had passes open relationships we've been poly like we did a lot of those things and um, that my mom probably doesn't know about. But I don't think she listens to this as much anymore. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was going to a wedding in Arizona. And um, I had asked my partner at the time. I was like, well, can I, like, you know, hook up with somebody when I'm down there? Because obviously, like, hotel sex is always fun and out of time stuff. He's like, sure. Mm-hmm. And he said, what about me? I was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. I was like, the only rule that I have, I was like, is you can sleep with anybody. I don't really care. Just mm-hmm. as long as it's like not in our house. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was really like my only rule. Yeah. Um, and so I remember on the way back, I was still in Arizona when I was driving back and he had, he said, I don't want you to be alarmed by something. And I was like, what? And he's like, well, I, you know, I did, you know, like you said, I could hook up with somebody and I did. And, um, but they gave me a hickey and I just don't want you to be freaked out by that. And I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. I was like, but mm-hmm. what? Cause like, that's the other thing about open relationships that makes them so difficult. Yeah. Like who would think that a hickey may or may not make someone uncomfortable? Like yeah. just whatever. Anyway. So when I get back to the house, like I see the hickeys or whatever and, um, 
And I was just like, oh. Um, I was like, well, where did you hook up? He's like, oh, we hooked up at my friend. Uh, I'll just say his name. Joey's house. We hooked up at my friend mm-hmm. Joey's house. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then, like, I kind of moved on from it or whatever. But there was something that was nagging me. Yeah. Um, like, something seemed off. Something seemed off. And so what I decided to do... Um, cause I, I'm not the greatest person. So, um, there was always this hidden feature of Grindr back in the day on Androids that if you held a button or something like that, it would actually show you your historical messages. Cause remember you could delete the person in front of your messages, but they kept the historical. Mm. And so, cause I had found out what the guy's name was. And so I had looked, so I remember we had a separate office room and I looked at my ex's phone and got to the history on the grinder to find the messages. And so what I had found out, cause remember, like, as I said, at the start of the story, the rule was, you know, you can hook up with average, not at the house. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I found out number one, uh, my ex had lied to me. They had hooked up at the house. Number two, they actually went on a date. Actually. Number three, the person slept over at the house. Oh, and the other rule um, that we had for our open stuff was to use protection. No protection. Um, and then, then the other thing I found out is they didn't use protection. Um, I found out that they switched positions, and in both positions, neither of them used protection. Uh-huh. Um, they hooked up three times in the course of this thing, all at our house, in our bed. Um, and then another thing that hit me sideways is, like, one of our relationship rules was no food in the bed, and I found out they had eight McDonald's in the bed. So even though that's not, like, part of the act, like, when I say yeah. cheating is the betrayal of the rules of the relationship, yeah, that's what I... So even that hit me sideways. Yeah. Um, and then he had gotten... I saw text messages to where he told his friends to lie about, like, you know, be like, well, t- make sure you... If John asked you that, you know, we you know, hooked up over at your house. Yeah. Um, and stuff like that. So he even got pulled his friends in. It was, I felt so horribly betrayed. And I remember when I finally confronted him on it, like it was like lots of crying. It was awful. I had to take days off where I was so betrayed Mm -hmm. because it was like a real cheating moment for me. Like I was so invested in love with this person and they broke every bond. Just mm-hmm. in, like, a course of whatever. It just broke every single bond. It was awful. It was... Yeah. So, and that's... And actually, just as a side note, to go back to the beginning of the episode... I remember Beyonce's resentment being your song for this <laughs> betrayal. Oh, yeah. Beyonce's... Re- oh, yeah, resentment really hit me. Yeah. Oh, gosh, it did. And so, just to circle back to the beginning of the episode, when I said that it really did suck when people... I was the person. Yeah. Who people would say... Wait, how can somebody cheat on you if you're open? Doesn't mean you can just sleep with whoever. No, that is not what it means. People would say that, I remember. Yeah. And they'd be they'd be like, oh, well, why do you get to do it? And you're like, because I'm able to do it because I stick to our rules. And right. my you know partner is not like trustworthy right. enough to stick to the rules of like... Right. And I even said... What we set in place. I even said... Um, I was like, the biggest rule outside of all the specific, like, so if there was like a vacation or an event that was happening, yeah. there were specific rules. But the other rule was, if the other person asked, you always had to be honest. Yeah. So I'd be like, I'm just feeling like you might have hooked up with somebody recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and you had to be honest if you had. Yeah. And he never was, was yeah. the other thing. Well, not never, but oftentimes. Yeah. And so, and, and that trauma actually just leads forward, too, because... It does. Even... <laughs> this is funny, and I, I I still try hard to break this habit, even with Adam. When Adam asked me when I'm going to be home, my ex, that was an indicator of how fast can I get a hookup in and lie to you about it, which mm-hmm. I found out towards the end of the relationship. So when Adam always asks me, when am I going to be home, I literally have to force myself to tell him, because it's not like Adam's trying to find a hookup before mm-hmm. I come home. He just wants to see me and wants yeah. to know when I'll be home. Yeah. Like a normal human being. <laughs> yeah, not like a shady human being. Yeah, and just the final point I do have about, you know, talk because we wanted to talk about age. Yeah. I'm a lot older now than I was in that relationship and I still suffer from the traumas from it. Sure. Yeah. But I've also recognized that I'm a little bit more cautious and I'm a little bit more thoughtful um, in my current relationship because I want to make sure that he never feels that 
insecurity that I would feel. Yeah. Just in general. Yeah. I mean, I think that's that's the goal from our past situations is to learn and grow as individuals and move forward. And, like, I don't think either of us ever want to feel how we were treated in either of the situations that we described tonight, right. you know. So it's important, um, regardless of what your philosophy is on love and relationships, that uh, we communicate and we respect boundaries and we make it not so taboo to um, talk about everything, you know, with our right. partners so that these types of betrayals and this type of heartache that happens from being cheated on, you know, isn't, doesn't happen. Exactly. So that brings us to the end of our episode, listeners. Yeah. Obviously, happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> Share a warm moment with loved ones with however yeah. you celebrate. And if you don't love the holidays, I'm so sorry, but happy holidays anyway. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye. This has been another episode of A Gem of a Secret Podcast. The hosts of HM of a Secret Podcast are Donatella My Secrets and Coco Jim Holiday. You may follow Donatella My Secrets at Donatella underscore My Secrets on Instagram. You may follow Coco Jim Holiday at Coco Jim Holiday on Instagram. Original music by Touche Douche and Party Favors. You can follow them respectively at The Touche Douche and at Party Favors Music on Instagram. For more exclusive content, visit www.ajemofasecretpodcast.com. That is a j e m of a secret podcast.com. Be sure to tune in every week on Thursday for a new episode wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any comments or questions, email us at a gem of a secret pod at gmail.com. Please don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe. Until next time, goodbye.